Hi, I'm Mike, Kilo 3 Delta Oscar, and in this video, I'm going to walk through uh, the building of a comms trailer. In 2018, I bought a trailer and converted it into a communications trailer. I updated some details and stuff on my blog, uh, but now people are asking for another update, and it's been a little while since I did an update, but this update I did in video. So I'm going to walk through what I did on the blog post and show you how I built it out, and then I'm going to do a, a physical walk around with the camera and talk about things. So. Uh, get ready to sit back for about 15-20 uh, minutes and see how I took an ordinary trailer made it to a comms trailer. everybody I want to do this video uh, I used to do this as an update as a blog but now I want to do it as a video um, I'll give you a little bit of background so in uh, in 2018 I decided I wanted to build a communications trailer and really what was behind that was we were doing some bike races and it always took like hours to get it set up and would be problems if you couldn't get certain things set up I want something more consistent um, than just a go kit that you carried somewhere and you plugged in uh, so I thought, well, why not build a communications trailer? We can use it for like winter field day when it's cold or even field day in the summer and, and all of that. So um, I started looking around for some trailers. I found uh, a bunch of different trailers, but I found a new one at a decent price. And uh, it was based in Georgia. And we were heading that way anyways to go on vacation at the at uh, Hilton Head. So I thought, well, I'll just buy it and stop by Hilton Head and the way, uh, leave Hilton Head and go pick up the trailer in Georgia and head home with it. So um, I decided to document this process and in 2018 I wasn't really recording videos. That's when I had kind of gotten to the burnout stage uh, and I hadn't recorded videos. So I decided just to take pictures and I documented all this in my blog and I want to walk through this uh, now because I regularly get up questions about updates like what else have you done to it and, and stuff like that. So um, and we're, with us getting ready to move I'm getting ready to load the trailer up with lots of stuff so we can just pull it down with us to Florida. I decided let's go in and do the video update and I'm going to put this on my on my blog. And if you haven't been to my blog, you can go to k3do.com or mikemyers.me. There's all kinds of stuff out there and I try to update it on a fairly regular basis. Um, but uh, for a while, this is one place I was updating it. But what I want to do is I want to walk through really quick uh, the process of building the trailer before I get to the recent video. So if you go out to the blog and I'll put the links to these um, on the in the comments below. This is the uh, trailer. You can see when I first got it, it was empty inside. And this was my first trip to Lowe's where I had bought, um, I wanted to insulate it. So I bought the insulation. Um, and I think I'll show you in here some more pictures like me taking the, uh, the walls apart. I basically took the paneling off the inside and put insulation in the mall and all that. And then uh, I bought the countertops and you'll see what it kind of ended up being. Uh, this is my, f I'm not a handy person. So this was kind of done um without being very handy just kind of keep that in mind too so um when you see some of these pictures you may see things that didn't really make sense and i totally went up to those if that's the case um so here you see me taking the walls apart and actually i'm putting them back together at this point i guess uh we've been putting foam uh behind the uh, behind all the, the wood and everything uh and you notice here these big gaps these were there before or when i took it apart so uh, they cover these gaps up with these planks right here, which to me seems like uh, a, a, not a good design, but I'm not a designer, so I don't really know what, what that is for, for or if it's for expansion. That's an awfully large expansion joint. But anyways, you can see me working through the process here of cutting the foam and uh, sticking it behind the walls right here. And here's a more pictures of that and then using tape to kind of try to seal off any of the gaps and, and stuff like that. So this was a good thought. It doesn't really work as well as I thought it would. Uh, and I think a lot of that's because the the metal, it's in between metal posts and those posts get warm in the summertime when, this, when the heat's on them as well. So but anyways, you can keep going down here. You see me, started, I started running wires. Um, this is where the original switch was located for the overhead light, which I quickly removed. And you'll see uh, why here shortly. But you can see me here still sitting and working on stuff, trying to uh, put everything back together at this point. Then I went and insulated the ceiling as well, and and I will talk about the covering I use for the ceiling, which is something that I, I do want to update at some point. But here you can see it's it's put together uh, and taped taped the ceiling taped up there, 
and uh, you can see the walls are mostly back together I don't have all of the strips on yet in this picture and then here I am putting on the floodlights before I cover up uh, the wood and everything I want to put floodlights on the on the side and the back of the trailer and uh, so here we go a little bit farther you can now see that I put the wood back up and then I to try to keep keep the air uh, out of the inside I actually went through and and use caulking around all this you can see is what I had done there and then I painted the walls uh, I painted them white and you can see it's pretty much all it's done right there everything's put back together the ceiling is not up there yet but you can see it's pretty empty uh, and, and for the paint job so this was the first update that I put out and you can see some wires here this is for a light that's up top um, and this one was for this floodlight that was on the back because I had to put it on there as of yet. So my second update, let's jump over to that one. This is number two. There you can see the floodlights on, on there now. And uh, inside, this is where I started update number two. Everything's painted. Second coat of paint. It looks much better now with a second coat of paint on it. Uh, the, the first one may have been primer. I can't remember. And I can come on down here and there's a picture you see look at the floor I epoxied the floor in the back gate So I use the same epoxy you put in your garage um, You buy it at Lowe's. That's where it came from everything here came from Lowe's as you can see their names all over the insulation and I ran a few more wires for things uh, as well So this is my first time ever trying to epoxy things you can see I made a little bit of a mess down here, but oh well It works just fine and we come down here now you can see a better picture of, the, of it you can see what I put I put the color stuff on the back so it's less slippery um, I don't really think it's that much less slippery because if it's wet it's still kind of slippery so I wish I would have used the uh, the additional grit which I did not use thinking this would, would be enough I did not do it on the inside mainly because we wanted to roll chairs around and this does cause it to make some weird noises and that'd be annoying so we just didn't put I didn't put anything in there for that all right, so here's a view from the side door, and you can see I, was, I had run some more wires at this point. And okay, so uh, power. One of the things I decided with this trailer is I wanted it to be a marine grade um, electrical system. So you'll see this is actually a marine grade plug, and then I installed it on, on the side on the outside. And that's mainly because where we live here in Maryland, we're not far from the Chesapeake Bay, and if ever there was a disaster of some kind, we could get called to somewhere close to the water, uh, particularly a salt water or like, like the bay or, or the ocean, down Ocean City, something like that. And I just want to make sure that we had, you know, it, it well tolerates the sea, the water and the sea breeze and stuff like that. So I put in a, uh, uh, a marine plug. Here you see me uh, partially through wiring up everything. I, I did everything, uh, bent all the stuff myself. Um, I'd done a lot of electrical work in the past, so I know how to do all that. My grandfather was an electrician, and I helped him out with stuff and uh, all that. So you can see me starting to put things together here. Together here, it's all up to code, uh, and you can see right here's the plug I put outside for the the marine, which comes in into these two panels. You also see a battery charge controller and a solar charge controller, uh, and then this is the breaker box for the 12 volts and 12 volt cutoff uh, stuff like that. So you'll see more of this as we go along. Uh, I decided to use uh, again marine grade uh, switches as well. So this is a marine a marine switch uh, you see like in a boat typically, uh, and you see I also use the smaller ones. The smaller ones are located in different locations around the trailer. This is at the main door for all the lights um, that are in the in the trailer. These are for like work lights, and then if somebody's working at, a, at one of the workstations, they have both USB and 12 volt, so we can it's really flexible as to what you can put where in the trailer. And that was the whole idea behind that. So that was update number two. Let's go to update number three. So here you see it's come a long way since that last update. That was a long period of time in there, um, but it was still in 2018. I got, I got this trailer uh, in, I believe it was April or May of 2018. Actually, let's look at the date of the very first post right here. Um, the very first post was May. So we, I got the trailer in May. So, and I was shooting towards a field day usage. So that's why I was in a rush to try to get all this stuff done. So um, this is the update just prior to field day. This was like the day before field day when I took this picture. So one of the things you'll notice is I put the, I put a wall in the back because I wanted to have a separate storage space in the back, uh, separate from the main work area in the front. And it's just a, it's just metal shelving. Um, I've added a lot more stuff to this now 
and I don't know if my video is going to show that. I don't think I went on it. Didn't know the back, but there's more cable hangers and uh, a thing for a spare tire back there. We have different types of antennas now. Oh, this is a tent. Uh, this is all military poles, so it's all it's organized a lot differently in the back. There's a lot more stuff, basically. I don't want to say it's more organized, but it's a lot more stuff uh, in there. And uh, we also have like repelling gear and emergency other emergency gear that's here, just in case we would ever need it. Um, and there's a lot more extension cords in here now. We've uh, had to go to larger extension cords for longer runs, uh, and uh, actually bigger extension cords as far as uh, the copper goes as well. So, but you can see it's definitely changed since the, the last picture there. And here's a picture of the inside. This is still a, a major mess at this time. Um, but you can see all the electricals in place right here. Um, these are the two go kits that I used to carry around with me. And my initial thought was I would leave the go kits assembled and then just remove these heads, which these heads go in this. They, they magnetically attach to this area down here at the, at the bottom. Um, and I thought I would leave them like that. So if ever I needed this a regular go kit, I would just grab and go. Um, and now I can just pull it out of the trailer within 10 minutes, my go kit's back to a go kit. And when I come back, I can in 10 minutes, put it back into the trailer again. Um, that was my initial thought. And you'll see in the video that I've changed my mind, particularly with the one on top, it just takes up too much space and it wouldn't take me long to put the radio back in there. Uh, anyways, and now I have a different radio that would, that's up there. This was a, um, a Yezu, um, radio. And now I have an ICOM 7300. That's in a it's a, and it's in a case right now um, because I used it portable, but it would generally just sit sit here and then we would just uh, you know tie it down whenever we were moving. But you still see right here this is a, still a mess because I was in a rush to get ready for field day, um, and then you see the uh, other radios back here and um, we, we have a, a marine radio, we have a scanner, we have uh, a DMR radio. A GMRS radio, a digital radio, and then I hate to say it, we now also have a CB radio in there. But we figure in a disaster, they're going to use whatever whatever mode is available to them. Um, so we decided to co try to cover all of our bases with those radios that were right there. So let's keep scrolling down. This is um, at the front door. So there's the switches for all the lights, and uh, the lights are white. And then we have. Uh, the three colors it's but this is blue red and green i think are the three colors that are here um this is the um light in the back out, out the back and this is the light that's this floodlight right outside there and we have our um our charge controller right here and our solar charge controller up here oh no sorry this is the inverter this is the inverter control so our solar charge controller doesn't really have much as a remote on it and then there's two small uh, monitors like this that originally wanted to put three, but I didn't. And basically it looks, it it's using, well, it's, it's a custom app right now that gives you like your location by grid square, uh, the, the real, t the current time and some basic information like that that was used during, during contesting and stuff. So, um, and it comes off a of Raspberry Pi. One Raspberry Pi runs three screens or up to three screens in this trailer. And I was like two of them hooked up. And on field day, here's uh, two young gentlemen working field day. Um, in the trailer and here's uh, another another person working field day you can see uh, I didn't really have any easy way to get cables in and out at the time this said this was like just ready in time for field day that was my my big rush for field day uh, here's a view of it from field day with the tower trailer and uh, in the trailer and then we also had some radios outside the trailer you don't have to use the trailer for for everything there and here's a uh, closer look let's just uh, not quite as updated as the video is going to be, but again, we have a marine, we have a scanner. Uh, this is uh, DMR and then GMRS. There is the uh, CB radio. I'll say under my breath again, CB ra CB radio. <laughs> and then this is actually one of the network radios right here. So the trailer does have Wi-Fi and has multiple ways of connecting to the internet. Uh, in it so we can always use a network radio and we do use that for events where people get into a dead area um, they can use their cell phone and, and talk to us over that as well so this is what I was putting all the cables together and that's where my last update ended and you can see I got lots of comments and questions about like you know what's the current status of it and uh, that's why I'm doing this video so now that you've seen the three updates that I had uh, out on the on the blog and you can always go read them I have a lot more detail and and writing about the stuff out there as well uh, I'm going to jump over now to the video that I recorded walking around the trailer. And again, as some of you have referred, I'm moving and my studio is torn apart. Cameras are all packed up, so I'm using an iPhone. So I'm very sorry if it's windy. 
uh, or uh, if the quality is, is bad. Um, that's, that's all I had at my disposal at the time. So let's jump over to that video now. I'll give you a little bit of an update. Um, some things have changed. Obviously, the last time I did an update has been a while ago. Uh, and sorry for the mess. It was just came back from field day, so it's still a bit of a mess. But um, what we've done is, I don't know if it was in the previous one or not, but we added a rack and a couple things in the rack. Uh, we have a repeater there that uh, has some things programmed uh, for different modes. Actually, we have the GMRS. Uh, in addition to, we have our own licensed frequency that's in there as well uh, that we use. So we can use that repeater for that in the need. Uh, we've added um, two servers. I call them servers. They're not really servers. They're actually small PCs. One of them has a hard drive attached so we can share a drive uh, in, the, in here and put files on, as a common drive. Uh, these two servers also uh, are connected to these two monitors. So we can put things on those monitors that we want to monitor, like when we do a bike race or whatever. Uh, we can put up like, the map where, the, where people are, things like that. And that's controlled by these two, what I'm calling servers. That's why they have the S, the S word there, there on them. And you'll see this right here is uh, a Wi-Fi device that does long range Wi-Fi. A lot of campers, people who do camping uh, use that so they can get some long range on it. And it also supports an external modem. So if we want to do like uh, cellular data as well, it supports that. We do have the ability to do longer things like uh, using either Microtik or Ubiquiti gears, things like that. So this router is here. Uh, typically when it's here at the house, I actually will plug this in because on the outside of the trailer, when you walk around it, you'll see it. I actually have a dish and I can, when I pull into here, it connects automatically. That's what this is powering right here. This is the powering, but it's a tiny dish. It's only like a six, it only goes like six miles. But. And we got our cloud router switch and then all these, all the plugs throughout the trailer come into this uh, patch panel here. So we can patch anything anywhere. They're all plugged in. All the plugs in the trailer are all plugged in actually. So, uh, and then actually these two go to the outside. Um, I don't have the box on there right now, but they were reserved to go to the outside. And then uh, we have our EPRS unit. So this is reporting in a couple of things. First of all, it reports in where the trailer position is. It's only eight watts, but uh, it does get picked up well. And I have a, a cable connected to the door, so if the door opens, I can tell if the door is open as well. So it's kind of an alarm system maybe, but it doesn't definitely tracks where the trailer is and everything as well. As we move over, we have our outside power. So on the right hand side, you see we have two mains, and that is so if we're using the uh, if we're on power if we're on mains power, we can plug it, turn it on. But if we're on battery power, we have this inverter here that we can switch to, and that's switched over right there. Uh, you see the solar controller is not working right now because there's no power to it. We don't have any solar panels on the roof at the moment. That's still something I need to do. I have the I have the panels, I just don't have them up on the roof yet. Um, and then we have our battery charger right here. And then we have the individual breakers and you can see the distribution box. And of course we have our, our DC disconnects depending on uh, what we're trying to control. Like there's a disconnect for the battery charger, a disconnect for the solar uh, charger. And then we have the main disconnect for all the other power. It's in here and in this rack we have a, a multitude of things because you never know which situation you're going to get into uh we are live up in the maryland area so we're not too far from the chesapeake bay so there's the potential that if we ever got deployed we might be something something with marine or have to do some marine so we have a marine radio there we have a scanner this is a trunk tracker five so we can listen to uh the police or fire or whatever in the area in the event of a real emergency, we have a CB radio. Uh, I think we've only tested it. We've never done anything else with it, with it because we're not big CB radio fans, obviously. Uh, and then we have a GMRS. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a, this is, this is a Westcom. This is actually a DMR radio. Uh, we have configured for this area. And then we have our GMRS down here. And this is network radio. I don't know if you've ever played with network radio, but basically it's uh, radio over the internet. There is no actual radio involved. <laughs> That's why. Interesting, they call it network radio. But anyways, as we move across, you see on this side, we have a Yezu for doing system fusion. And then we have a, a, a quad band right here. So we have two quad band antennas on the roof of the trailer. Uh, and so we can pretty much do anything, uh, uh, two meters, 70 centimeters, uh, six meters and 10 meters. Um, and that's what that's for. And you see the two monitors are hooked up to the, a PC back there. It's not Wi-Fi connected, it is connected to Ethernet, but it has the ability to do Wi-Fi in the event that we would need it. Uh, if we pull in somewhere like next to a McDonald's and we don't have internet, we could just use theirs as well. So as a possibility, that's why it's there. Uh, these monitors, they tend to move whenever the trailer moves. They aren't, they aren't fixed there. 
And we have an HF rig right now, this is the 991. Um, I also have a 7300 that I'm probably gonna replace it with and get rid of the 991. It just seems like it's a little easier for people to figure out how to use. Uh, so we'll swap that out. And as we go across, we have a ICOM, so we can do a D-Star as well. Um, this is, I had this one in my truck as well as my shack. I these probably my favorite radio because it's so quick to get around and use. Um, it's not nice and pretty colors like the, like the Yaesu, but it's a, it's a nice radio. And then we have another quad band right here. So these two, uh, and this is, um, these are TYT radios, so they don't have any data ports on them. However, uh, the Yezu on the other side doesn't, so can the, the ICOM 5100, although we just don't use it that way. So, and again, another computer and monitor. As we go around, you see the two monitors there. The one thing that's not been done, two things I'd like to get finished in here is I won't put carpet on the walls. I don't know if you can hear it in the camera or not, but uh, it's a little echoey in here. If you get two people on the radio, it's a little bit loud. Plus, we have air conditioning and heating, and this thing is a little bit loud as well. So uh, we like to get some of the noise down, the echo noise down, put carpet on the walls, and that's over there as well. The other thing is in this area back here, the original intention was to build like a bench seat. So if, you, if somebody was working overnight or whatever, they had to sleep, they could lay down on the bench or you could have people in here with you now. And you see right now you got... Um, a lot of stuff laying around from field day. Things shift a little bit in transport, but uh, uh, we got a little bit of a mess to clean up in here on field day. Got a refrigerator here. Um, and I've been looking to put some kind of rack maybe with some more storage potentially. Also under the bench, I would want storage too. Uh, storage is a definitely a, an issue. Behind that wall is storage. Um, I'm not gonna look to walk through that in this video, but you can see that from the pictures what we did. Nothing's really changed back there except maybe the contents a little bit. but. Uh, and looking over here, we have this fold-up table. So you see it's hinged and you pull it up and it snaps up. And we've also added some additional legs to it in case we put something heavy on it. We can drop the legs down as well. The whole trailer is wired like this. So we have a distribution panel for power. Uh, and then we also have the Cat 5s everywhere. So you never know where you're gonna need Cat 5s in the event of an emergency. If you've got an on-site incident manager, you may bring this table up and then we have a laptop they wanna plug in, uh, stuff like that. So um, that's where we, we did all that. Control panel, I, just, I won't replace the control panel. I made it out of wood uh, right now, but I'd like to get it metal. But this is a control panel for all the lights that are in here. Plus you also have your five volts and your 12 volts. So somebody was sitting here, they would have it. Plus your readout. Here's the charger, um, the battery charger, which we're plugged in right now. So we're running on battery charger. Uh, and then we also have the inverter remote right here. And you'll notice use two of these screens that are right here. Uh, and there's one also one in the middle. They basically give information off the of GPS, like what's your grid coordinates and things like that. So it's more of a contesting thing. I guess it could be used for other things as well, but it's a Raspberry Pi that runs these two, uh, two screens are the same thing. So that's the inside of the, of the trailer so far. We did add some storage up here, um, which is nice. The doors uh, stay closed in transit. You can see we put all of our fuses and headsets and everything, keyboards and mice, so when we move, the keyboards and mice aren't flying around the desk here. They're all wireless. The one thing, and if anybody knows where I can get one like this, I'd like to get one more because I can put another one right there and it's the exact same size, it fit perfectly. When I ordered them, I only ordered one and the manufacturer no longer sells them. So I can't get one just like it. So the option is, do I replace it with something? They have two of them or do I just find the manufacturer to, that maybe extras laying around, but the manufacturer doesn't know where I can order them from anymore. All right, well, let's take a look outside around the outside of the trailer and we'll show you what's what's outside. All right, hopefully this is quiet enough that you're not gonna hear the wind blowing. So there's the trailer from the outside. Uh, it's a door at the door and we can we can back up here a little bit and show you the whole trailer. If it don't fall down, welcome backwards, there we go. So there's a trailer, you can see the antennas on top and it's a, a, dual, a dual with a axle trailer. So I know I'm gonna get this question right here. Why are those two antennas bent over? And let me just say that it's taller than I think it is while I'm pulling it behind me. I didn't hit anything uh, important. I, we have a tower trailer and I it went under it. So it just bent the antennas a little bit and that back bar I need to be pulled back forward again. There's only two antennas that got affected by it, but uh, that's what happens when you're not paying attention to how tall your trailer really is. All right, so we go around here. Again, this is pretty much a normal trailer. It's not, not really a big deal. You see, I have a, I have a, up there, I have the cover off right now. I'm experimenting with some different GPSs, but you can see that some of them go to the roof. There's multiple things in there that use GPS, so I had taken off and experimenting with things. And then there is the uh, 
dish I was talking about. This is a six mile dish. It's a ubiquity. I have them in my house here going between the house and the shed and then to this. So when I pull in here, I get high speed internet kind of automatically. Uh, but the last time we went out, we were actually using this right here and we we're picking up internet from off Comcast uh, from a mile or so away. It was working quite well actually. So it's still using that, it's using my Comcast now instead of, uh, instead of the high speed internet here. And on the side, I've added this. So I well, we didn't put this out there, but everything is marine grade. All the plugs and cables and everything are marine grade. And then on the side, I have boxes like this that go to the roof uh, until I get up to the antennas. And it's breezy out here today. So uh, sorry for the wind noise if you have that. And you see I did another one over here. And then I got one more to put in back there. Uh, but I just haven't gotten to it. And I'm not sure I'm going to. I don't know that I need that because it's already tough antennas up there. Uh, the one antenna that's not on here is a low band antenna for like the Red Cross. They don't seem to be using that very much anymore. So, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's the outside. It's a pretty normal trailer on the outside. Uh, the only thing you notice is driving down the road, people look at you funny because you got these antennas on top. So that's the only thing. But uh, that's pretty much it. That's the trailer right there. So one other novelty item, and I'll, I'll move inside here, where the wind's not quite so bad, is people. So I have lights up here, uh, and there's you see the multiple ones, and they have multiple colors. Um, there we go. Where is that? Like there's red if you want to. It's red at night, which actually is nice. I never really thought much about it, other than people use red, but it is nice if you're working here at night uh, to be able to see the red ones. We have blue as well, and then we have a uh, also we have green, and then we have uh, some other lights outside. I'll see if I can turn this on like this. This light, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. I'm going to cut this out, but we have uh, one of those on the back as well. So. And they're turned on right here. Those are the LED lights that uh, are really bright on cars and things. Looks well, but we use white most of the time since it's nighttime. But so yeah, a uh, little bit of uh, options when you come out here and uh, and as far as color lighting goes and things like that. The red actually is amazingly good for working at night. Um, I've done the night shift twice now in here and maybe three times now on field day, and we turn the red lights on and just use the radio and the monitors for the rest of the lights. So. It works great. All right, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I will come out with an updated video a little later. Uh, after we get to Florida, I do still want to complete the inside with carpet and the bench in the back and a few other little cleanup items, but I'll do another video at that point uh, to keep you updated. Uh, you can always go to my blog uh, at k3do.com or mikemyers.me. I, I do updates there as well as on video. Um, I'll probably try to do the video as much as I can. But I do want to thank you, and if you uh, would appreciate it, if you could click the uh, like button down below, the thumbs up, and if you uh, could click the subscribe. Brand new channel, trying to get things started, so every little bit that I that I can get done there, as far as some support, is very helpful. Thank you very much, 73, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.